Hello, it's Carnelian, and today I'm going to be answering a few questions about um, dissociative identity disorder, specifically dissociative identity disorder and how it pertains to me um, and my system, um, our system. Um, so as you may know, um, our system has three main hosts. I don't know why I'm holding up five fingers. Uh, 30 main hosts, um, myself, Carnelian, um, Kaylin, and Mason. Um, Mason is our primary protector. I am our spiritual protector, and Kaylin is our mostly normal um, part um, who takes care of like most of our daily activities. And um, Mason and I also take care of our daily activities as well. Um, so I'm going to put a picture up right here of this tag that I found on Instagram from at shstorygame um, for Multiplicity Month. Um, this is something that you would normally do one question every single day but I am just going to answer these questions um, right here in this video because that's what I like to do um, is just answer everything all at once. I just go big or go home. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to answer um, 30 questions because it's February. Um, I've missed a couple days in February. It's not even the beginning of February anymore. And there are only, it's a leap year. So there's only 29 days this month. And there's 30 questions. I printed off this paper, this picture, but I put that screenshot up there. Um, so there's only 29 days in February. There's 30 questions. So I'm just gonna answer them all in this um, video because I would not have been able to do one question every month, every month, every day, because there wouldn't have been enough days. Um, so let's go. First question, how many alters are there? I don't know. Um, we are discovering more every single day um, as we learn more and more about our system. So far we have about 20 in our system that we have named and discovered. Um, that we know of. Um, I don't know all of them. I have not met all of them. Um, Mason knows the majority of them. This is 20 including all of our subsystems. Um, so, that includes Mason subsystem, Bugs subsystem, that have fronted so far. Um, there are 20 altars that have fronted so far that we know of. Um, I don't have the running list. Our partner has the running list. Um, because I have not met them all, Kaylin does not have access to all of them. And Mason has access to the majority of them, um, being our primary protector, but he still, I don't think, even has, uh, Mason's memory is crap, and I don't think even he knows all of them. Mason's offended that I said his memory is crap. It is crap. Okay, whatever. Who was the first altar? The first host, I can say, was Charlotte. Um, Charlotte was our first host that we know of um, and she was host for a very 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 long time. She hosted from the ages of like infancy all the way up to and through high school and the beginning of college. How long have you known? How long have we known that we were multiple? 
pull. I guess we started to figure out that we were multiple the beginning of 2015, but we didn't really understand what was happening. Um, it really started cementing in maybe around 2017 um, when the idea of multiplicity was actually introduced to us, um, but we didn't really apply it to ourselves until late 2017 when our therapist started working with the internal family module, internal family model with us in order for us to cope with our trauma and that's how and we started doing EMDR in 20... We did EMDR in 2015 as well. So that's when things started really... We realized we had a dissociative disorder, but we didn't realize that we were multiple until around 2017. Um, describe your inner world. Ooh, I like this question. So our inner world is um, a series of rooms, but it's not like a house, it's just a series of rooms. Um, and each room has its own, like, each room is different for each each altar. Um, each altar has their own room for their own space. And then we have our own big room that we can all meet together in. If we need to, we have like a common space, but we each have our own room to go to, um, which is also where we came from. Um, so my room is a garden and it's, there's a lot of rocks, like beautiful crystals and flowers and herbs. And I love my room specifically. Mason's room, no, I'm not going to talk about Mason's room. There's a lot of books in Mason's room though, um, but it's, Kind of like a castle with a tower and a dungeon both it's big and Kaylin's room is kind of has two modes to it um if you've ever seen steven universe Kaylin's room is sort of like rose quartz's room in which it can either be really accommodating and can be whatever you want it to be. It can be a very nice space, but it can also be very scary in that it can just turn into a big void and just a large expanse and continue on forever and ever and you sort of get lost. Um, what is your main means of communication? So our main means of communication um, is through video like this. Uh, we communicate with each other through video. Um, using our phone a lot. We use Twitter to tweet back and forth to each other. Um, we leave notes on our phone a lot to each other. Um, we also do a lot of like meditative thought transfer. <laughs> like we just think a lot back and forth to each other. Um, we talk back and forth to each other just like out into the open and then it like bounces back off the wall back into our brain um, <laughs> and that's really fun <laughs> so yeah and I really like talking to all of my all of my 
friend inside my head. <laughs> um, I used to think that I was crazy. <laughs> I used to think that, um, I don't know, something was massively wrong with me. And I called all the voices in my head that I was hearing um, Imaginites because I thought I was just imagine imagining everything. And I, there's like, if you look back on Twitter, um, back in like 2014, um, on my original Twitter account, you'll see tweets about Imaginites and like the voices in my head. and. Um, I guess that was like their first communication with us. Um, like their first me, like trying to communicate, um, trying to make themselves known. Um, show us something in Alter Me. Do I have anything in Alter Me here? Um, this space, we all made this space together. Um, we got this chair, we put up these curtains, we made this space, we're making this video right now. Um, I will be making a video of me making some crafty things really soon, so stay tuned for that um, because I will be making some things and I'm really excited for that. Um, Seven, what type of altars do you have? We have lots of type, types of altars. Um, we have Mason, who's our primary protector. Um, Kaylin, who's our like normal person. Um, there's me, who's like our spiritual protector. Um, there's Dolly, who's literally a dolly and likes to make people happy. There's Dandelion, who's What is dandelion? Dandelion is kind of like a person who's always tripping. And then there's um, Bug, who's like a giant centaur beast. Um, and they were created to eat chicken. I don't know why they were created, but they really like to eat chicken, um, specifically on a drumstick. Um, and then there's um, our littles. We have our littles who sometimes I'm a little, but like sometimes I'm not a little, and sometimes I talk like a little, but my brain is real big, and I, it's real confusing and real like oh my it's, it's a big big old whirlpool in my brain um we have our littles we have our we have kaylin who we thought was named kaylin for a minute and it was really confusing because we're like oh no we have two kaylins that's a problem um but no their name is kaylin spelled with wings and not a w spelled with wings uh, and they are a fairy um they have a lot of different types of altars so we're very we're a very diverse group most of our altars are some sort of uh lgbt which is why our system name is um, multi-queer. Um, uh, how old are all the altars? Our altars range from anywhere between the age of one to, I think our oldest altar is 28. And that is Mason. Mason is 28. And he is our oldest altar.
Although there's a bug who is really kind of ageless and kind of an ancient creature. So then there's that. But how old are all the Alteras? Anywhere between those ages. Um, show us your face planes. I don't like to do face claims. I don't like to take other people's pictures and claim them. Like as a system, we don't like doing this. We have made it a rule not to take other people's pictures and claim them as our own. Um, or claim them as, hey, this is my face. Because we feel like that's kind of weird and sort of identity theft-ish. Um, we like using filters though. Um, like filters, like Snapchat filters, Instagram filters, and those types of things. We also like using avatar makers um, and having artists commission. We like commissioning artists to draw us um, because that we, we, we like doing that instead. Um, so we'll post some pictures right now. Okay, those were some pictures of um, what we look like. Um, yeah. Show us your voice claims. Again, we don't really like claiming other people's voices. Um, that's weird. But this is my voice, this is Carnelian's voice. You've heard Mason's voice on multi-narrational. Um, and also in the in our previous videos, um, you've heard Kaylin's voice in previous videos. You can hear our other voices when you meet us, um, because our voices change um, when we talk. Um, they they do have they do sound different, um, and we do communicate differently. Um, any communication tips? Yeah. Videos like this, like this type of thing, uh, making videos to yourself or to your system, really helpful. Making um, journal entries or notes on your phone, also really helpful. Leaving sticky notes around the house, really helpful. Um, also, um, Ooh, what else is really helpful? Um, knowing where your drink is. So if you leave, if you just pick a spot to always put your drink down um, as a system, it's just have a, a place in your house to always put your drink down you will always know where to find your drink. So like in our house, we have a couple specific places where our drink always is. Like there's a place in the kitchen and a place on our nightstand. So we always know where our cup will probably be in our house to find a drink. Um, so we know where to find our cup of water or cup of soda wherever we are going to like before we pour ourselves another cup of whatever we want to drink we always check those places first uh, because we like one of our system mates have probably already poured something and we need to probably finish that first before we pour another thing um medication reminders are also pretty good always make sure like hey did we take this med you should probably like have a reminder or have someone help you 
uh, remember to take your meds or let you know whether or not you've taken your meds. That's also a good thing to have. Uh, tips to allies. Um, it's always nice to ask, hey, who am I talking to? Like, that's okay to ask if you know you're interacting with the system. Um, just to be polite, and that way you're addressing the correct person. Like, hey, I just want to make sure I'm addressing the correct person. But it's not to be, don't be like, like, hey, I want to talk to so-and-so instead. Like, that's not, that's not really polite. Um, it's okay to be, to say, hey, um, I'd like to talk to so-and-so at some point today. Could you pass a message along? Or, like, that's okay to say, hey, uh, if I don't get a chance to say hi to Mason, can you pass a message along and let them know this? Like, that's all right, because, like, at least you're not saying, no, I don't want to talk to you, Carnelian, because that would be like real shitty, like real rude. Um, it makes me feel like I, you don't want to see me. Um, so like, it's nice to be like, hi, Carnelian, it's really nice to see you. Um, even though, like, let's say you really did want to say hi to Mason, um, can you tell, hi, Carnelian, it's really nice to see you. Can you tell Mason I say, hey, like, that's fine, that's okay. What's not okay is saying, hi, Carnelian, uh, is, can I, is Mason there? I'd really like to see Mason. Like, that's, that makes me feel like you're saying hi to me, but you'd really, you really don't want to see me at all. You'd rather see, see Mason instead. And it makes me feel invisible, you know? Um, another tip to allies is, like, if, if you know you're talking to Carnelian, don't refer to me as Kaylin, even though my, even though I am, you know, this body is named Kaylin legally, you know, don't refer to me as Kaylin if you know you're talking to Carnelian. That's just rude. Um, you're talking to Carnelian. That my name is Carnelian. My name isn't Kaylin. You know, refer to me as Carnelian. Um, you know, just be respectful of who you're talking to. Um, yeah. Also. Another tip, if someone is in the middle of a switch, don't go like, like, that's rude. I can't. Don't, don't like, if someone is like spaced out, if we're like spaced out or dissociating or like switching or like something like, don't like try to get our attention. Don't like, you know, whatever. Don't like wave your hand in front of our face. We're in the middle of something <laughs> that really messes us up. It's rude for one thing, and it really is kind of triggering sometimes, and it's, it can trigger our fight flight response. It can get us, like, I have thrown hands before because someone did that to me. Like, I have accidentally punched someone in the face before because someone was, like, snapping in front of my face because they, like, I was, I was startled. Like, if I'm startled, you don't know, I don't know what I'm going to respond because, you know, it's just rude. Don't do that. Um, anyways, next question. <laughs> do you want to integrate? Um, so integrate, I think this question is referring to like a final integration where everyone is combined into one, um, full, single, uh, unified consciousness. Um, that is not my or our system's goal. Um, I, Carnelian, am an integrated part. Um, I have integrated 
with I am inter an integrated part between um, Jade and Charlotte. So Charlotte was um, one of like essentially the original host of the system, and Jade was um, what would be would have been considered a persecutor part of the system. And we integrated because we we decided we were more stable that way. Um, we were both having a hard time, and we. Um, decided we would be a lot more stable together. So yeah, um, integration can be very helpful in help helping um, some alters become more stable. Um, but I don't think it's our goal to become a fully integrated, no longer multiple system. Uh, number 14, what is your system name? Our system name is Multi-Queer. Um, I have been uh, suggested to call us the Queerdom, um, but I didn't really like that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it is a good name, but uh, we, we call ourselves the Multi-Queer. Um, and we have our podcast called Multi-Narrational. And Mason has the podcast called Multi Narrational, and I'm starting um, a resin crystal crafting, and I'm going to call that Multi Facet um, Gem Creations. And so, yeah, that's going to be fun stuff. I just like multi because multiple, multiplicity. Um, I like playing off of that. Um, I being the whole system, uh, not just. We're all working together. And do you have any subsystems? So a subsystem, um, the way that we as a system use it is when an alter has their own system. Um, so Mason has a subsystem. So Mason has his own alters and Bug also has a subsystem. Um, so yeah, we do have, a subs we do have some subsystems. Um, Mason has two alters um, that we know of named Logan and Lee um, and they both have fronted before but they can only front when Mason has fronted prior. Um, Logan in the inner world which is like in Mason's inner world, so it's like a double layer, it's like Inception, so it's in Mason's inner world. Um, Logan is deaf blind. So when Logan fronts, the visual and oral, oral meaning audio, stimulation is very overwhelming um, so Logan does not front very often and Lee or Shirley um, is blind in the inner world um, and so when they front the visual stimulation is very overwhelming so they don't front very often or when they do front they prefer to have their eyes closed or they prefer to be in the dark. We're a little lopsided now, but we're all right. Um, bug subsystem, as I was saying. <laughs> okay, sorry. Bug subsystem, as I was saying, is, um, An army of like, an army, I do mean like legions of more centaurian beasts that are slightly like half bug size. Um, and when I say half bug size, bug is um, eight feet tall at the withers. So he's about 12 feet tall at the head. Um, 
So half bug size means about four feet tall at the withers. About six feet tall at the head. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty big, um, big. Um, but these are um, lesions of very protective uh, centaurian beasts who are whose function is essentially the same as masons, but specifically for bug. But yeah. Um, next question. 16. What do y'all disagree on? Hmm. What do you disagree on? Ooh. There is one thing in particular that we, that, um, Kaylin and I, and Mason and I, Kaylin and Mason, our united front on this, and I heartily disagree with them on this, um, because that, because I want something and they don't want it. <laughs> that's basically all it is. Um, <laughs> but it's something that's very um, important to me, and it's very important to them that we don't have it, but it's important to me that we do have it. Um, and that is a baby. <laughs> um, and so that is a very big disagreement that the three, that we have a disagreement on as the three main hosts. Um, actually, Kaylin is, um, hi cat, Kaylin is, uh, swaying a little bit on this. Mason is very much against it, um, but it's a baby. Um, I want a baby by any means necessary. That can be surrogacy, that can be natural birth, that can be adoption, that can be you know, any, any means necessary. I want a baby to love and cherish and raise and hold and sniff and just, I want a baby. I want a baby. Um, Mason, um, is in in this body, Mason, and in and in this world, and the way Mason is, Mason is a trans masculine individual, and so Mason feels a huge sense of dysphoria whenever um, the idea of birthing or carrying a child to term, or any of that comes up, being maternal, any of that. Um, Mason does not want a baby. Um, and I have brought up that Mason would be a great father. He is a great protector um, for all of us. But Mason does not want any more responsibility, which is understandable. Uh, we are uh, the system is a great responsibility for Mason to take care of. Um, so Mason does not want a baby. Kaylin, however, uh, very specifically, has recently, uh, and he, Kaylin is one to sway back and forth on this topic. Kaylin sometimes wants a baby and sometimes is very against having a baby. So Kaylin is not very reliable on this topic at all because sometimes Kaylin's like, yeah, I want a baby. But sometimes Kaylin's like, no baby, no baby. So 
you know, Kaylin, it's it's like me against Mason, and Kaylin's like maybe, um, <laughs> maybe baby is what Kaylin's stance is. Um, so Kaylin uh, said that he would like a baby, but only a natural birth carried to term with. Um, but it must be with one specific person. Um, so that's what we are currently disagreeing on um, between the three main hosts. Um, what are the religions of each altar? Um, you know, I'm gonna just do my religion because I don't know the religions of all of the altars. And <laughs> my cat is being very noisy. Come here, cat. Come here. Come here. No, he doesn't want to. Anyway. What are the religions of each altar? I'm just doing my religion. Um, I'm a very spiritual person, um, as the spiritual protector. Um, But I don't follow any specific organized religion. Um, I, as Charlotte, used to follow Christianity. Um, we used to go to church every Sunday. Um, and used to take communion and used to read the Bible and used to pray every every day, every meal, every night. You know, that that was something that Charlotte did and took to heart. Um But nowadays, our belief is more universal in that if there is a God, or whatever divine force there is that it will work to each person's higher purpose and each person has the ability to channel the energy of that divine force with loving intention um, which you know is similar to prayer um, in order to amplify um, the vibrations and the reverberations that that, that force and that energy creates. really a specific religion. It's more of a we send good vibes to people. <laughs> we uh 
we send good vibes to people and we we send love to people and we believe that love is the most powerful force out there. If there is a God, let him be made of love, or let her be made of love. Let them be made of love. And if that God made a sacrifice of their child, as hard as that may seem, or made a sacrifice of any sort, to atone for sins, then let that sacrifice have been made out of love. Question number 18. Have you come out as a system? Uh, technically, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, here on the internet doing this. Um, how's, question number 19, how's your memory? I forget. Uh, question number 20, any tips for new systems? Figure out the best way for you to communicate, whether that be in videos or whether that be through writing notes, journaling, figure out your best way to communicate. Um, don't miss therapy. Um, also, find a support system, um, whether that be your friends, your family, um, people on the internet. Get a really good support system. That's going to be really helpful. Um, number 21. What songs do you associate with multiplicity? Um, a song that I really associate with multiplicity for me uh, Carnelian. Um, there's a song from Steven Universe that played in our head for a really long time. Um, when we, when Charlotte and Jade had integrated, it just kept playing over and over and over again. And it was... It was one of the songs between Ruby and Sapphire um, when they first fused, or one of the songs when they fused, and that was one of that was a song that just resonates with me um, as an integration. Twenty-two. Can you edit your inner world? Eee, not really. Um, I can like put new flower, plant new flowers in my garden, but I can't really edit my inner world. Um, 23, are any of the altars LGBT? Yes. Um, that's why we're called multi-queer. 24, are you all comfortable in the body? No. Um, and to cope with that, um, Bug, in, when he, when Bug fronts, they wear horns. Um, when Dolly fronts, they carry around a dolly that looks just like Dolly. Um, and we wear clothes that match our personality and match how we would like to look. And we wear makeup sometimes to make us feel more like us. Um, we bind our chest. Um, we we do whatever we can to make ourselves feel more comfortable in the body. 25. Who is the host? We already answered this question. We have three hosts. That is myself, Carnelian, that is Kaylin, and that is also Mason. Um, 26. Do you or your headmates ever feel like you want your own bodies? Mm, Bug sometimes does because Bug would really prefer to have his centaurian body. Um, 27. Are different altars 
in control of different parts of you. Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes when we are driving, um, I will be driving or Kaylin will be driving and then Mason will be jabbering on because uh, Mason doesn't actually know how to drive, but Kaylin and I do. 28. Have you been diagnosed yet? Uh, technically, we have been diagnosed with Complex Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, or CPTSD, and um, we are working toward a diagnosis of DID. Um, however, some of my professionals do not want to put it in my chart because they don't want to make it really difficult for me to be able to access um, trans-related health care um, because it's very controversial, which I can understand that um, because insurance can sometimes make it very difficult for trans people to access the care that they need when they see um, that you have some complex or severe mental health issues and they will say well no you are you really trans if you if it's if it's actually a dissociative disorder and so I can understand why they you know but also it seems sort of gatekeepery um, I feel like if they if my health professionals know what they're doing they should be able to write the letter needed in order to get my health care covered. Um, 29. How often do you switch? I switch pretty often. I'm surprised I haven't switched at all during this video. Um, and my switches actually happen most often at night, which is really irritating for my partner who really wants to go to sleep when I'm switching. And often I just keep switching and he just wants to go to sleep. Um, what are the mannerisms of each altar? Uh, that's a really hard question to answer. You can actually just see them when you meet them. Um, as I make more videos and as we post more videos, you'll get to meet more of us and you'll get to see what the mannerisms are of each of our altars. So yeah, that was all 30 questions. This video was really long. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these questions have given you a little more insight into what my life is like having associative identity disorder. Um, my name is Carnelian Fisk, and I really hope you enjoyed this video and all of its disruptions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.